Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, today we're finally going to put on that black bonnet that I painted, but I was thinking while I'm at it, I've got S13 wheels. Which wheels, you ask? The ones that are sitting on the, the ute at the moment. They're S13 teardrop wheels, if I am correct. So what's better than an S13 with S13 wheels? I guess an SR swapped S12 with S13 wheels. But before I fit them, I'm going to fucking give them a clean because they're filthy. So as you can see, they're pretty dirty. Just gave my hose down. Used this Australian product called Bowden's Wheelie Clean. It basically, you spray it on and wait a minute or so and it goes purple and that makes, gets rid of the iron and whatever else. I went over it a couple of times because, it, you know, I think it needed, it hadn't been, <laughs> hadn't been touched for a while clean, cleaning wise or with the cleaning product. So I think it just needed a bit of extra effort to cut through it all. Obviously did both sides and then while I was at it, those tires were, which were on the ute, were 155.75.15, if I recall correctly, all around, so they could fit, even though I had spaces on the front anyway, just to make them fit, but um, that was not going to be suitable for the S12, so I went stock on the front, 195.55.15, uh, and then on the back I went, on the back I went slightly wider, 205.55.15. And in all honesty, I could have put them on the front. I could have gone 215 on the back. So before putting on the wheels, I decided to take off the spaces. There's 20 mil spaces all around. As you can see, they're pretty chunky, pretty big. They've got loose at some points. So when the bolts inside get loose, they start clunking around like as if you've got a broken wheel bearing or whatever. So it's a bit of a pain. I only tightened the front ones, but when I came back and undid these, especially at the, the rear left, the passenger side, they were fucking tired, so obviously someone else had had that issue and tried to really, really bolt it down tight, which is fine. But I just don't really like spaces. Don't want spaces. You could solve the the spacing issue with the right offset wheel if you really want, which will give you more dish anyway. Obviously, these wheels are not the ones to do that, um, and they sit inside the guard. But that's how they're supposed to be stocked. And I think when you're lowering it, it's probably going to help anyway. Which, as you'll see soon, is going to be next on the cards because. This thing needs to be fucking lowered now. It sits high, especially at the front, and it's gonna look a lot better lowered. Here it is. I'm really happy with that finish. I've had it on like that for now about a week. Uh, in the rain, works beautifully. Everything just beads up really nicely so you can tell it's quite smooth. It's obviously a bit dirty, uh, fucking black bonnets. They just collect dirt everywhere, don't they? So I'll need to give it a, a clean every now and then, but it looks pretty fucking sick. Um, here, I don't know if you can tell or not, the panel gap is just a bit out. What I realized when I was looking at the other bonnet post putting this on, they put a little notch in the under frame railing. So obviously somewhere the SR was hitting on there. Um, it's not hugely a problem. It did make pulling the bonnet latch a little bit difficult, but it works now. So I think maybe just that under bonnet heat cover was, you know, a little bit thick, but it's quite compressy. So it just got compressed down a bit and it's okay. That, that looks fine though, you can't really tell. Uh, other than that, it was so easy to put on. Sorry, my friend didn't want me to film him so when we were putting it on. So literally we just put some uh, cloth over the windscreen when we took it off and put it on. Uh, I marked up the old bonnet where, we just, where I took it off just in case, but you can see on this one and on the old one, just the mark's pretty clear, pretty obvious. Then we just t finger tightened it while we were holding the bonnet on put it down to see what where we needed to move things around and it was real quick and easy just to get it right. Japanese cars, man, I, I reckon if it was a Euro or definitely an Aussie car would have taken fucking forever and still not get it right, but panel gaps look pretty good to me. This side too, it was so easy to do. So if you're scared of doing it like I was, just give it a shot. It'll be, it'll be easier than you think. Other than that, I just had to put a hole where the 
stand goes. I'll just show you that now. So yeah, other than that, I put a hole right there just where that stand goes, real easy. It's a Stanley knife job. And the only other thing that was a problem was the washer wipers. Uh, the, the connector broke, the T-connector T in the middle broke and those two um, plastic tubes were hard. Fuck it, was, it's almost impossible to get it, a regular walk-in auto store. I couldn't find, haven't been able to find it anywhere, so I bought some, um, I might have to buy it online, but I bought some um, just vacuum hose. I'll put that on, but fuck, what a pain. T-piece was easy. The water plastic hose was impossible. Nowhere, nowhere had it. And I may take this, that's the sound deadener for the interior um, tape. I might just take it off. It'll look a bit shitter, but it looks like it's sort of coming off. It's not sure what it's doing really, so yeah, all right, well worth it. That, that bonnet undercover stuff is really good. <laughs>